Hey everyone, today I will introduce to you the intelligent classification and extraction of point clouds. This function uses deep learning methods to classify point cloud data. And for places where the classification effect is not good, manual editing can be used to modify the classification. And the point cloud data can be extracted according to the elevation intensity, return number, time, and classic requirements, etc. Deep learning classification is to use deep learning methods to classify point cloud data. Click the deep learning category to pop up the setting dialog window. The parameter setting of this function mainly includes the following points. Point cloud file. Check the point cloud data that needs to be classified. Mode. The software currently provides two deep learning models. We can choose different modes according to actual needs and data conditions. And there are two processing types, GPU and CPU. If the performance of the computer graphics card is high, we can choose the GPU mode, and the software will list the GPU model and video memory information in the GPU setting interface. If the computer has multiple graphics cards, we must pay attention to manual switching to the graphics card that can run the deep learning environment. It is recommended to use NVIDIA graphics card for GPU mode classification. The classification efficiency of GPU will be more than twice that of the CPU. Classify mapping. The software will be divided into 11 categories by default, which are unclassified such as noise, ground, low vegetation, high vegetation, building, wire, static cars, dynamic cars, guardrails, poles, pedestrians, such as moving people, bicycle, electric vehicles, etc. The labels of the default categories and the software basic categories are the same, and of course, we can reset them if needed. The batch size indicates the number of point cloud samples processed each time. The larger the computer memory and the higher the performance of the graphics card, the larger the value that can be set, and the faster the overall processing speed will be. The software has set the default value according to the performance of the computer. We can modify it ourselves, but it is still recommended to use the value recommended by the software. Click OK to start the classification. When completed, we can see that our original data has been classified into these 11 categories. Since the effect of deep learning is not 100% accurate, we can modify the data by manual editing also. Click Classify Selection Area and the edit window and classify settings window will pop up. We can choose polygon, rectangle, sphere, or circle to frame the area to be classified, or choose an online area, an offline area, or in the plane distance settings, set the maximum value, minimum value, plane thickness, and robust fitting, etc. of the distance to select moving objects above the ground. Roads below the plane, or moving objects on the ground. We can also reverse the selection by subtracting the area. If the box is wrongly selected, it can be cancelled directly or by pressing Ctrl plus Z. The software provides a variety of frame selection methods, which can be applied to a variety of point cloud data scenarios. Here we take the polygon as an example. Click to frame the area to be classified Check the category of the framed area in the source category. Select the category to be assigned in the target category and click the classified button. Then we can see the frame selection area has been classified in, into the target category. In the extraction panel, the software provides five extraction methods, elevation, intensity, return number, time, and to extract by elevation, first select the point cloud data to be extracted, and then set the maximum and minimum values according to our needs. 
The extracted point cloud data will be saved in the folder under the same path as the original point cloud data by default. We can also set a new path. It is recommended to set it under the same path here to facilitate subsequent data management. Click OK to start the extraction. When completed, a pop-up window will prompt whether to add to the current project or create a new project. We can see that the point cloud data value at this time shows the corresponding elevation range after extraction. and the operation of extracting by intensity is the same as the above steps. To extract by return, first select the point cloud data to be extracted by return number. Set return number from one to seven times, and then click OK to start the extraction. It should be noted here that if the original point cloud data does not exist, the return number selected by the user cannot be extracted. To extract by time, it is also necessary to select the extracted point cloud data and then input the extracted maximum and minimum values, as well as the start time and end time. If we want to extract the point cloud at a specified interval, just enter the interval time in the text box and then click this button. The start time and end time will increase as is set in interval. We can also add the input time range to the range list. Or import a data file in the .txt format externally. And it should be noted that the time range in the file needs to correspond to the maximum and minimum values of the point cloud data. If the time range is misset, it can be deleted. When completed, all point cloud data within this range can be extracted. To extract by class, we can select the point cloud data to be extracted according to our actual needs. Choose a certain category or multiple categories to be extracted. And then click the OK button to extract. When the extraction is complete, it will also be added to the current project. Choose the display by classification here. And we can see that there are only the categories we need in the point cloud data. This concludes the video about point cloud intelligent classification and extraction. Thank you for watching.